When the final bell sounds, I realize that there is still a lot of time left in the day. I'm wondering what to do. It's an odd. At the hospital, I had 24 hours a day of free time. But here, filling the considerably short hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Muto is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. I don't know why I said it like that. It's so loud. I don't want to lower it, but I'm afraid that you can't hear me just because the fucking music is so loud. It's just this one song. It's all the way down, and it is so loud. Whatever. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him, addressing me, but I guess it's only natural to spark some conversation since there is nobody else around. Um, nothing. Just thinking about what I'd do after school. I feel like I have to talk louder because this song is really loud. I don't know how loud it actually is in-game on recording, so I'm sorry. My desktop audio is turned up all the way. That's kind of scary. Whatever. We'll pray that I'm louder than the game here. Or at least we'll just bolt through this. Teacher slowly puts on the cap and pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, checking it against the desk twice, clacking it. He seems very methodical for a brief moment. I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routined. You have no plans? No, I consider joining a club, but don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I, I guess. I just... I don't know what to do. How to continue from there. Mutu looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back from to avoid the conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people, I mean, other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not like I'm isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about the disabilities. It's like, it feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. Teacher scratches his cheek, absent mindedly and looks looking very unresponsive these things are only an issue if you make them one you cannot conform you can talk normally with someone even if they are blind or something I try to look behind is superficial there's not a single student who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance well, he says the same thing that Yuko did I know they're right but it's hard how can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness when the only way to communicate with her is through Misha? Or Hanako, it's not like you could ignore her face. You could, Masao. You could ignore her face. <laughs> you could just see that one part. Look at that eye. Just don't even consider the other. But I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, head straight in an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. <sighs> Misha, she starts towards the teacher's desk with a bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed at the interruption, and Misha in general, slumps in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong, but she has no idea what. Yes? We've talked about the volume control before. Yes! <laughs> but she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. What is it? Hi, uh, we need help. We're running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a distress. She waves a pink slip paper she's holding around. So, go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood! Plywood is always the problem. Last time we wanted more and there was only just a little, but that time we just took a lot, of, took it all, and went with that. Now there's none left there. So, what do you think there would uh, be? Uh, uh, so, do you know where there is some? I don't understand. H how would I know? Shi Chan, I mean, the, the president thought that a teacher would know if there is plywood. Was she wrong? Muto looks like he's in the greatest pain, <laughs> frowning his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible, <laughs> like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. What? Okay. Hisao, you have really absurd comparisons. <laughs> maybe, maybe lower it back. Like, what? <laughs> this man. I'm afraid I have no idea if there's any plywood in the school, let alone where there would be if there was any. Oh, what should I do? 
Perhaps try Mr. Noimia. I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything that you need. You have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Uh, I don't have time. We're so busy. She holds her head with both of her hands, looking despairingly as possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do, and we're falling behind schedule. Ruto looks gravely, and then she suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. What if you could get more temporary help? He switches to staring at me. Focusedly. With a hard expression, as if to say, Go make some friends. <sighs> I guess I could give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Ichan. You're really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points with the fingers, yelping, Ah! <laughs> Very puzzled. <laughs> Come to think of it, what's Yi chan doing here? Class is over. You should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Yi chan No, I'm not. Is Yi chan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Ruto <laughs> sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha get off her teacher's back. So what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from, from somewhere if there is none in the art room. She offers me a note holding. she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether or not I'm joining the council or not. Aww. Still, thanks, Yi chan Try to be quick. We are in the stall building stake straight streak right now. <laughs> we must hurry, hurry, hurry. She bounces off to the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't look so smug. I can't the list of the number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting. This is undoubtedly Shizune's. I have a sigh. <sighs> I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to the classes 3 1 and 3 2 on the right side and 3 4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with the identical doors, are rooms that I don't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept, or not in use. Use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows. Shadows creeping all over the desks, specks of dust and dancing in a stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call into an empty room. Anybody? Ho Something catches my eyes. <laughs> then I stop mid-sentence. Sorry. Ah. Uh, my favorite girl. Sitting on the desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes and a morsel of food stuck firmly in the end. This is an odd way of dining. Seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands. But her presence here is what takes me back even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in the corner very still, but I somehow took her as a part of the furnishing or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. This girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in the highlights. Is that, did I say that right? Headlights. That's right. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned in silence, silence punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. The girl stuffs the fork full in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly as she's chewing. It's a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. It's for the festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be any, someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here, too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was expecting... Suspecting my, observ my observation was false. <sighs> you are pretty observant. I guess it does, but... Who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. I sound Nakai. I just transferred him on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake your hands with you, but at least we know who you are now. <laughs> That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl 
this girl is. She seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your own stuff, the supplies are in the pack. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you for use for it, then? There's no word for a meal that you get after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much, too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, and my delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. <laughs> with much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes with that very much as much impoliteness. At least as much impoliteness. She points straight at it, points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From the outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop, opening my mouth, but not getting a word out. I, uh, I can guess. I'm a good guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question, or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances, or Lily's, either. Naturally, I would go around this in my head. Rin keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overtly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer is written up there. The beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. Hmm, I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary. It's like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. <laughs> this messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement is the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me off completely off guard. I think it might have reeled back physically as Rin's eyes were widened in revelation and astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? <laughs> okay, who calls it a tackle, Rin? <laughs> Still particularly partially in shock, but recognizing the need to reply to something, I spit out the first thing that I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Arrhythmia. I said it. Warblick blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purs purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people, and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? You know, people with different problems. So you just, like, go around asking what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. <laughs> with little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away, but I keep thinking about what that was said. It's the first time I've told anyone else about my condition. All the other people either have known about it already or have heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. Should I have told it has a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Miss Al, and I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Maybe this Tezuka girl has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is burnt auburn, most almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair would be impossible with no arms. True. The boy's uniform or lack of arms make her look very thin. It's almost scrawny. It was not particularly pretty except for her murky green eyes which flicker restlessly from her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance and shadows make it seem like they don't really reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within their deep wells. She moves her feet almost deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how the slight the sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone? And this late? Or do you get the occasional visitor? 
visitors. Hmm, maybe you're my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof. She's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh, that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bits of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Nisha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice of you for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was just about to take a nap anyway. You can do whatever you want. What you need to do you need to do whatever you're going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping? Uh I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I I'll catch you around, Dezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hisao. Then you are. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, <laughs> but that intimidating feeling when you get someone staring at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. This is something like a tiny smile on her face, maybe. I quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, what an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. What's she here? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Misha. I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow, she had gotten into jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. Briefly mentions... Reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about the global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that to the side. Thought to the side. Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she could have couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention. But Misha is visibly excited. No, wait. More importantly, who's in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek at me, past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hee-chan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, sorry, I got things here. We were just going to bring them. I think you were up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was in there with you, I wonder? Misha signs something quickly to Shizune, pointing out her ear a couple times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door to the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property while sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen completely in place, apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders, but su from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, and I just can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason for my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize that she might have trouble opening it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at both of us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Miss mm. Tezuka, what do you think you were doing? You're absolutely not permitted to use school property for such a uh, disgraceful activity. It sure is suddenly crowded around here. I didn't know that I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune slash Misa's scolding and have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune's taps on Misha's shoulder, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Hmm. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under pressure of Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself, too. And think about it harder. As Misha signs her reply to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Hmm. Miss Tezuka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their lunch onto it. Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't. Not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully 
as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. 